Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so I didn't get to make that follow-up video yesterday, but there is no training camp today. There is no practice today, actually. The Giants are, I guess, on the plane or about to get on the plane to go to practice with the Cleveland Browns. And they're not practicing in Cleveland. They're practicing somewhere pretty close to there. But the joint practices start tomorrow. They're going to be tomorrow and Friday. So that is going to be something that is going to be our pretty much our first test for our starters against another team. And against a team that I think is going to be a playoff team this year, or at least a, a team that will win nine or ten games this year. So that should be something that we should be looking forward to. Other than that, what happened yesterday? First off, I don't think I ever got to talk about Alfred Morris being cut. He's a guy that we all saw come into the league with RG3 that year. They were running that option. He was doing his thing. And he was a very, very good running back. I think as a rookie, he led the league in rushing, or maybe it was maybe he was pretty close, but he was a beast. He was a beast. Uh, but the thing is, he pretty much spent his entire career as a one-trick pony, as a guy who's just going to take the ball and run. He was never really the best pass catcher. He was a little lost in pass protection. And if you look at that first preseason game, he actually gave up a sack uh, because Matt Parrott, that sack that you saw him give up, uh, they did say that they were supposed to be a chip on that sack. And Alfred Morris was on the left side of Mike Glennon. He didn't come across Glennon to make sure that he picked up that blitzer. And, you know, he gave up a sack. So I'm sure as a veteran, as a guy who's not going to catch passes, once they saw that he wasn't really up to par in pass protection, they made that decision to go ahead and let him go. He was a good player for us last year. And when I say good, it's not like he was setting the world on fire. But he was there in spots. And, you know, you remember these kinds of players that come to your team and score a couple of touchdowns and have a couple of nice plays in a season where you think that your team is turning around. So Giants Nation will forever be grateful to Alfred Morris to a certain extent. I guess at the end of the day, he's still a Washington, you know, I guess I'll say risk. And he was never a Washington football team person. But at the end of the day, he's a Washington guy. But he did play for the Cowboys and he did play for the Giants. And yeah, he, we had some pretty fond memories of him being here. So I wish him the best of luck if he ends up retiring. <laughs> That'll be funny. It won't be Joe Judge's fault. But if he ends up retiring, he had a really good career. And he's a pretty dude. He's a pretty cool dude. That um, baseball bat se celebration that he has came from like a kid that he was helping out uh, on a Little League baseball team or something that I think that was sick or something. So he's always been a good dude. But uh, moving on to what's going on now. Um, we made a lot of moves the last couple of days. I made a video already about uh, getting Keon Crossing onto the Giants. And Keon Crossing is someone that is, I mean, some guys say he's a 4-2, but I think his official 40 was a 4-3. But he's one of those guys that are super fast. And I have a whole video about him, so I won't really go too much in depth. But I thought that Keon Crossing was good depth because he started four games last year to go with Isaac Yadam. Um, Isaac Yadam, of course, a lot of Giants fans act like he's the worst player in the league. I thought that he was decent. I didn't think he was good. I thought he was decent. I thought we won games with him at corner where he really didn't, you know, do too many bad things. But anyway, yesterday we all get the news that Isaac Yadam has been traded to Green Bay. So I'm thinking, okay, so that means that Crossing is going to take Yadam's job. Uh, because Yadam is gone, I was like, if we can get at least a seventh round pick or a sixth round pick back for Yadam, that is a win. Like, it's a win because we gave up a seventh to get Yadam. We gave up a sixth, uh, you know, of 2023 to get um, to get Keon Crossing. So if we could get one or a sixth or a seventh back, it's pretty much like we didn't really have to give up anything. But actually what happened is we didn't get a, we didn't get a, a pick back. We actually got another player back. And the thing that makes it even more strange is that we got another cornerback. So we actually traded a corner for a corner. You normally never see trades like this of player-to-player -player trades in the NFL. And you usually definitely don't see player-to-player -player trades of the same position. So Josh Jackson, we traded for from the Packers. 
he was a guy that was highly regarded coming out of the draft, uh, I think in 2018, I think it was. And he pretty much has been a disappointment. He got taken in the second round that year. Pretty much has been a disappointment for them. They said that he doesn't really fit their scheme, but Patrick Graham was there when they drafted him. And I think he's a guy that probably has a shot to make this roster. I, I think if we trade it for him, at the very least, guys, I mean, if we were going to end up cutting Isaac Yadam, if Josh Jackson gets cut, we it's really no sweat off our backs because that position is still the same position. But I think he definitely has more potential to be a better player than Isaac Yadam because if you look at him in college and you see him coming out, I mean, this dude was supposed to be a starting corner, uh, a guy that was really good for uh, the Packers, but it just never ended up panning out. I guess he wasn't a scheme fit, and they decided to make that move. But um, Jackson, I'm going to be looking out for. Right now, we have Bradbury, Adoree Jackson, um, well, not Josh Jackson, but Adoree Jackson, Darnay Holmes, Aaron Robinson still has that core thing. I'm starting to think that Aaron Robinson is going to start the year off on Pup. Um, you got Sam Bill, who's his long shot to make the roster. Rodarius Williams, he's had his ups in camp, but but there's some downs in the Jets game. Uh, Julian Love is going to switch back between corner and safety. Um, Keon Crossing is, is definitely going to make the roster, I think, because he's that special teams guy. So we got a lot of corners here, and we'll see who ends up making this roster because there's a lot of depth here. And I think after you know after you get to Holmes and uh, Robinson, you know those guys are kind of really mixed up together. Uh, Crossing. Um, Josh Jackson, Sam Bill. I don't think Bill has a shot, but but I think after after Holmes and Robinson, it's pretty much a toss up. And then something else from practice yesterday. Really, all I got from practice from from what I was able to read. I mean, there were a lot of interviews and things like that. But besides, like the actual practice, uh, DJ looked good. They said he he looked crisp. He was on time with his receivers. Said he threw another three touchdowns to David Seals. I mean, that dude is really fighting to make this roster. I think he's really competing with CJ Board. This past game, he got all a ton of offensive reps, but I think they're going to give him some special teams reps in this Browns game because he's got to provide something on special teams if he wants to beat out CJ Board. Now, I think at this point, he's a better receiving threat than CJ Board, but CJ P- Board plays all four special teams that's field goals, that's punts. That's kickoffs, uh, and then and then the returns. So he he's got a, he's got an uphill battle because that six receiver spot is usually reserved for a special teams guy who can also come in and be a reliable, solid wide receiver, which pretty much is CJ Boris' face. That's really if you open the dictionary and you say six receiver plays special teams is a good special teamer and is a solid receiver as far as he's not going to make any huge plays for you. He's not going to be your number one guy. But if he has to come in as your fourth receiver because some guys get banged up, you're fine with it. So he's got he's got to provide some stuff on special teams in order to beat out C.J. Board. But he's looking really great in camp. Uh, and and it's, it sucks that sometimes you have to cut receivers like this that are really good uh, as receivers going against these backups, but they're not good and special teams. Uh, that same thing happened with Corey Washington a couple of years ago, and you saw what happened. Every other team said, you're a good receiver, but you're not good enough to be in our top three guys, so you got to play specials. So we'll we'll see what goes on with Seals here. He'll play some special teams pretty soon. Um, and, and I think he threw some touchdowns also to Darius Slayton, two or three, and we all know that that, uh, that chemistry has been pretty much up there. DJ has had the chemistry with Darius Slayton before he even got into the starting lineup. And Darius Slayton actually had a nice, like, toe tap, back shoulder end zone grab, which makes me happy because I was listening to an episode of Big Blue Kickoff Live uh, maybe about three months ago, uh, where one of the hosts, Paul Dettino, was talking about how he talked to Tyke Tolbert in passing, and he was just excited that they got Kenny Galladay. And um, he, he talked about. He wanted to see the back shoulder throws that Eli threw to to Plax go to Kenny Galladay. And there were things that said Tyke Tolbert was saying that he didn't like the back shoulder throw. Now, some people think that, you know, the other hosts were saying that he he likes to joke around a lot. So maybe he was just joking with them. But uh, seeing a back shoulder throw in the end zone made me happy because I feel like that kind of fits the skill set of some of the receivers that we have, especially Kenny Galladay and David Seals and a little bit of Darius Slayton. 
So the offense looked probably the best they've looked so far yesterday. They really lit it up. Um, I think some of these things were on the 7-on-7, seven seven, some were 11-on-11. 11 11. Some were just individual one-on-one -on -one DBM receiver drills. But nonetheless, they, they, they've looked really good lately. We're going into the Browns, um, going into the Browns week tomorrow, and we'll see how they really stack up against other teams. And then this leads me to the last thing. I really hope that we get to see Kadarius Tony soon. I was hoping that he would play in this game, but he's still got another in injury, and I'm I'm probably going to put out another video about Kadarius Tony, just about him, because I'm not I'm not panicking. I'm not saying he's going to be a bust. But at this point, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I really am frustrated at this point because he was our first round pick and we we haven't really seen him. So he's dealing with some injuries. He's dealt with some other stuff. And that's all understandable. But I just really hope we see the guy soon. I'm thinking in this third preseason game, hopefully he's ready. Hopefully Ellison Smith is ready. I mean, hopefully Aaron Robinson is ready. Our entire draft class, besides Rodarius Williams and Aziz Ojolari, has pretty much been MIA. So I think I'll just make a video about Tony and that entire draft class to just talk about we got to see him on the field. So that's all I have for this video. You guys have a great rest of your day. And let's get ready to see some nice practices with the Browns starting tomorrow. We made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.